Morning, John. Thanks for joining us today. Um, we're quite excited to have a quick brief chat on Engenic and your involvement with the company. So, John, can you give me a bit of an introduction about yourself and your background? So, yeah, my name's John Bacon. I, uh, I was associated with a specialist pharmaceutical business for 35 years, and I built a business called Link Healthcare, which ended up across the whole Asia Pacific African region. And uh, about four years ago, I was merged with a UK public company called Clinigen. And uh, I exited the business about three years ago. And now I'm, um, I'm an investor. I really love investing in Australian technology uh, and start up Australian businesses. And um, I, while, while I do know the pharmaceutical industry, I also like investing in um, good Australian technology across a, a broad variety of, uh, of sectors. But, I, um, but I'm specifically interested in Ingenic and uh, it's uh, a little favourite of mine and I'm very bullish on where, where those guys are going. Yeah, John, so you're an active investor. You've been built Link Healthcare to be a multinational company and then sold that onwards. Um, how did you first hear about Ingenic? Um, yeah, it was, it was actually a bit of serendipity. Um, in March, 2020, when uh, Australia was going into lockdown, I was introduced to the, the co-CEOs of Ingenic for, a, for actually quite a different reason. And uh, we got talking over Zoom and uh, I was supposed to meet with them. I think it was about the 20th of March as Sydney was going to lockdown, but we did it by Zoom. And, and I got really interested in what they were doing. Um, they sent me a deck. I had plenty of time to have a look at it. And uh, they were in the middle of, um, of a fundraise back then. Um, but unfortunately, COVID had stalled them right down. And um, so we had a really good look at it. I, I just couldn't believe what they had done in the 14 years since they, they started developing this new technology and um, I felt quite compelled to, to get involved with it. And um, I introduced a few of uh, my old mates in the pharmaceutical industry and we, we put together quite a, a decent size investment and um, over the next few months, um, Jennifer and Himanshu, the co-CEOs and the inventors, um, invited me uh, to join or even begin um, a bit of an advisory board for the business um, to help them go through into commercialization and, and licensing. And, and that's where we're at. You know, I, I, I like being closely associated with the companies that, that we invest in. Um, while we've got a few that we don't have much involvement at all, um, I'm, I'm super close to Ingenic and like I am with VentureCrowd. You know, I, I got involved as an early investor in VentureCrowd and I joined the advisory board of VentureCrowd and uh, love the business. And um, I, I was able to introduce Ingenic to VentureCrowd to um, help them with their pre part of their pre-IPO rate. Yeah, fantastic. So you mentioned a few things there about the technology and what they've achieved over the last 14 years and then your reasons for investing. What, what were the main things that attracted you to Ingenic and Ingenic and what were the main reasons for making that investment? Well, you, you know, Alex, it's, it's always about the people. And, and first of all, I, I was really impressed with both Jennifer and Imanchu from, from both a management and a scientific perspective. And, and this technology was, was born out of their laboratories 14 years ago and to discover the Ingenic Dream Vector, this tiny little nanoparticle that is capable of being loaded up with pretty much anything um, and it, it finds its way directly into tumours and is able to kill tumours. The, the other thing that I was really excited about, like I see a lot of this stuff, you know, lots and lots of companies that have got really great ideas, but this is the first time I've heard the word cure. And, and also what was really great was that the business was, when I got involved with Ingenic, they were already in clinical trials in humans and well down the track. And so looking at this, it, it's almost, you know, I, I wish I'd seen this company 20 years ago. You know, it's, um, it's amazing that the technology is, is in humans. It's been trialed. Um, clinicians are getting cautiously excited about the technology, um, we're, we're seeing remarkable results in patients with end-stage terminal cancer. And patients are being given not 
a couple of weeks extra life, given more like a year and or more of, of life in patients who have basically been told science and medicine has nothing, no more answers for them in their state of their disease. And, and that, that's incredibly exciting. And when you, when you translate that to other businesses um, across the world that have developed technologies that have been groundbreaking, they're, they're reaching astronomical valuations. So for me, there, there's, there's two things here. Of course, I, I'm an investor in the business and I'm super excited about the business going to uh, most likely a NASDAQ listing. Um, then I look at the NASDAQ capitalizations of companies that have gone down that track and seen where they've ended up. And um, you, know, you can look at companies that have been, been listed on NASDAQ with even technology that's um, modest compared with Ingenic, where Ingenix could be, and the valuations are in the tens of billions. But on the other side of the coin, and this is the thing that really excites me, is that this technology needs to, needs to get out there. Patients need to have the option to use these new technologies. And that's what I'm super passionate about, is making sure that the, the technology that Ingenix has developed actually gets fully developed and fully down the track of where it, where it could ultimately be. And that's a critical part of uh, oncology treatment across the world. And, and that'll be most likely through an out licensing deal with a global pharmaceutical company. And, and those licensing deals are incredibly lucrative. And so I guess that's, that's, where, we're, that's where we're headed with it. Yeah, absolutely. So you mentioned a few things there about the technology, clinical trials, and then potentially licensing and activity that you're seeing with you know, NASDAQ IPOs and the broader biotech sector. Um, what do you see as the key drivers for Ingenic to be successful? Well, um... I, I, the key driver is to progress the, the human clinical trials forward as fast as possible. And, uh, and, and while we've been conducting clinical trials in Australia with, with pancreatic cancer and other cancer patients, and it's going really well, we, we need to progress to some pivotal large studies, most likely in the United States. So at the moment, um, an application has been made for the technology to be recognised it's called an investigative new drug, an IND with the US FDA. And um, with the recognition and the approval of that IND, it's, it's a license, basically approval to play in the US. And so um, large institutions, high quality hospitals in the US are very interested in, in taking this technology and doing pivotal clinical trials in the United States and with large numbers of patients. And getting that IND approval by the FDA is critical in moving towards that. The, the other thing that the FDA offers, and this is a fairly recent thing, is uh, FDA recognises uh, a breakthrough technology, and it is called breakthrough status. And um, it, it, it's a kind of hello world moment. If you achieve breakthrough status with the FDA, it's like, okay, this is something really interesting. And... Um, we're really hopeful that the FDA will recognise Ingenix technology as breakthrough status, and and then we've got options in fast tracking the technology towards marketing. Yeah, that's certainly exciting, and and you outlined a lot of profound effects that the technology is having. You mentioned the effects of the technology in these trials about the extension of human life and late stage um, cancer. What impact do you think Ingenic will have on the broader biotech industry with their technology? Yeah, that, that's a pretty interesting question. I mean, the, the biotech industry in Australia or the world biotech industry. Um, so I'll just backtrack a little here. Like the best way of curing cancer in the human body is by using the, the hum, humans, the body's own immune system. Okay, so the, the body's immune system is really good at killing cancer, but cancer is very good at evading um, the body's immune system. And, and the critical part, even though the Ingenic system delivers chemotherapy into the tumour and kills tumour cells, the, the, the second factor is um, getting the, the human body to recognise the tumour as foreign and the immune system to kill it. 
and that's breakthrough. So no other technology is able to deliver chemotherapy and stimulate the body's immune system into recognizing the tumor and, and, and to eradicate it from the body. So that, I mean, that, that's breakthrough really, and we really hope that'll be recognized as breakthrough by the FDA. So there is a company recently that was sold, in, sold and taken off the NASDAQ for $23 billion. Now that, that company had technology which extended life in humans in, in a particular cancer by about six weeks. So that's, that's a very small number compared with the, 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 the life expectancy extension that we're getting in, in the early clinical trials. So potentially this business could be worth upward of 10 to $20 billion. Now that's, that's insane for a little Australian company. So what will that do to the biotechnology industry in Australia to have what could be um, I mean, really, when we this business should should list in Nasdaq between eight hundred and a billion, eight hundred million and a billion dollars. So that's an instant unicorn. And then the upside um, from licensing and approvals could take the valuation way beyond ten billion dollars. That's if the technology is successful in clinical trials, and of course that's the risk. But on paper, it could easily be one of Australia's biggest companies. Yeah, 100%. And as they move towards a listing, um, it certainly is exciting in terms of the valuation and outcomes for the company. What are you seeing with broader activity in the biotech sector and how do you think this will affect an upcoming IPO for Angelic? Yeah, I, I was sent an article yesterday which, uh, which basically said that investment in biotechnology at the moment in the United States, particularly in um, in Series B and pre-IPO is at an all-time high, all-time high, like massive. So the, the money's out there, people are recognising the return in biotechnology and, um, and so I, I can only see upside. So John, I appreciate you joining us this morning um, and giving me some insight into this. I do have just one more question for you. Um, how is the world a better place thanks to Ngenic? Well, I mean, we'll, we'll see that in the fullness of time. I mean, obviously, this is biotechnology. Everybody knows the numbers. Everybody who invests in, in pharmaceuticals in particular knows the numbers. You know, it costs, you know, to take a product to market, high-tech product to market, it costs a lot of money. We all know it's supposed to cost $500 million in 20 years, but, um, you know, it could be more. But we're 14 years into this. We're already in the, into, into human trials, which is successful. Um, we need more money to progress it. Um, and so who knows? I mean, the other thing that we have to consider is, is, it is it is pharmaceutical. And we know that nine out of 10 pharmaceutical products fail. So that's the risk. But the, as I said to you earlier, the, the, the thing that I like about my investment in Ingeni is that it, it's not super early stage. It's not a company that's purely been successful in animal trials. The company is well down the track in its early clinical trials in humans and getting great results. So, and with very little side effect profile. So of course, there's, there's loads of hurdles before this, this product becomes commercial and it's, it's a long way down the track, but it's already a long way down the track. And so um, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty confident that this technology will reach the market at some stage. But, you know, we all know that unexpected things happen in biotech and particularly in pharmaceuticals. And um, there's, lots, there's lots of stories about great products that have been you know, left behind. Yeah, you're certainly right. Life does take unexpected turns from time to time. We can see that in the last couple of years with coronavirus and everything that's come out of that. I mean, it really seems that Ingenic is in a great inflection point and this raise will truly get them to the next step and evolution um, yeah. and through to an IPO and potential acquisition. So we're, we're certainly excited about the prospects of the company and has, is the reason that we have undertaken this raise with Jennifer Hamanshu, yourself and the team. And we're really looking forward to seeing how we can progress the company um, forward as well. Yeah. So Jenna, and don't forget, don't forget that one of the, uh, one of the, uh, side issues for Ingenic is is that the Ingenic Dream vector is is a great candidate for vaccine, and it, it's it's not 
like a protein vaccine, like the AstraZeneca vaccine. It's not an mRNA vaccine like the Pfizer Moderna, but um, the early animal studies have shown that Ingenix um, COVID-19 vaccine is, is, is quite possibly um, a potential second generation advanced vaccine. And that's going into early clinical trials in Melbourne as we speak. So watch, yeah, the, watch, watch that space. Yeah, that's certainly exciting and hopefully it can bring some great outcomes so we can get back to a, a relative normal life. Yeah, a lot of people. I, think, I think the one thing that, that everyone's going to be focusing on in, in the next couple of years is, is the long-term vaccination program and, and do we, you know, what do we look at for booster? And, and if we can get another vaccine that's got uh, a high immune response in booster, then, then that, that's a really nice space to be. But also the Ingenic vaccine looks like it, it could be a very potent immune stimulator as well, which, which means that patients with cancer, with immune systems that are damaged, immunocompromised patients might still be able to make um, an adequate immune response to, to a COVID-19 vaccine. So we'll, um, that's a definite watch this space. Let's see where that goes. Yeah, definitely. We're, we're watching this space and hoping and hoping that they'll get to the next level as well. And we're really excited to um, be working with yourself and the company to see where they can progress this technology. Certainly seems like it will better build a better future and outcome for Australians, but globally as well. Yeah, thanks, Alex. It's actually been uh, you know, quite satisfying to connect to Australian companies that I've got great involvement with and connect them together for a mutual, mutual gain. 100% John. Well, I appreciate your time, mate, and thank you. Thanks, Alex. I really enjoyed talking to you. Thanks, John.